So we're just here at the Merriwar Pasture Demonstration Site, located 10 k's northwest of Merriwar on the Scone Road. This site here is predominantly um, a brown black basalt soil. The location is on the Orca family property who we've um, developed a partnership since uh, 2015 and Dave and myself really wanted to create a space for landholders to be able to come and see um, how different pastures fit the Mirawal landscape and the, and the climatic conditions out here. So we started off with these tropicals behind us and we've got some key findings on how to successfully get some tropicals going. Then followed by over here we have some temperate legumes which we put in in 2016 just to see what legumes work well and also their persistence. And coming out of the, the drought that we've just come come out of. It's really good to see how these legumes have survived and um, got up and got get going in productivity again. In recent years there's been a lot of interest into some tropical legumes because these tropical grasses have been so successful and we're just starting, this is the only second year for some of these species here but first year for some of them as well and trialling those to see how um, they're adaptive to the Merriwar farming systems and the information that we gather from this really helps landholders think about well what's going to fit their pasture system best and we can really learn from here which ones suit their system, which one needs a little bit more care, the to do's and what not to do's. In 2015 we established, uh, we started the process of establishing some uh, tropical grasses purely because um, we're starting to see that the industry was, is, was moving into that direction of getting tropicals into the system. There wasn't much known in the area of how, how to establish them on, on some of our heavy soils, what grasses work best on these heavy soils um, and, and how to get successful establishment happening. These grasses are fantastic. They really are competitive for moisture and will outcompete anything once they're established. But when they're young um, and trying to get them established is very very trickly so there's the key some of the key messages we've learned from this is um, that plan there needs to be a plan of attack and stick to that plan of at least three years prior to sowing a tropical is getting on top of those grass weeds those annual grass weeds such as liver seed grass barnyard grass those grasses are so competitive that when they compete against the tropicals um, the tropicals end up losing and and you've spent a lot of time and a lot of money in, in purchasing this, that it'd be a shame for the, just one slip up in annual grass control to take over and um, really compete against the tropicals and inhibit them from getting established. Another thing which is critical in this heavy, especially in this heavy soil, is ground cover. It is your compost, it is your insulation. These are, you sow these in spring, summer, they can only be sown to a depth of two centimetres. Um, just think on these heavy soils, 40 odd degree day, this, this seed bed for the tropical grass needs to be wet for five days. So if, if you don't have that insulation there, it dries out and hence you don't get the seed germination and growth. Uh, so the water use efficiency of these tropical pastures is exceptional. They can turn a small, storm event, the scud that's come through, interfeed so quickly. Um, they're just amazing in how they can turn moisture in, into, into um, vegetative growth so quickly. That's a good thing being producers because it gives us ground cover quickly and it gives us production quickly as long as we have the soil health as well. Just remember that um, these pastures, they grow fast, so they are hungry. So soil nutrition is imperative with these, whether you put some legumes in there during the winter time, or you actually do come over and start fertilizing as well. Uh, they will give you a huge return on investment. Because they're so quick at growth, they can go from this stage, which would be a high vegetative, um, high um, feed content, quite good MEs, um, to this very quickly. So manage, there is quite a bit would be a difference in feed quality between these two. Um, so that trying to manage that is, is of importance when having tropical grasses. So the key is those big paddocks that you normally have, have if you do not have the stock numbers, well, they may need to be shortened up. You may have the option of running hot wires through them 
just to that you can crash graze, you can come in, the cattle can eat as much as this as they like and then move on to the next stage. Um, once they do get like this, um, obviously we do encourage seeding, but just remember they are quite hard seeded and, um, and they will germinate again. But um, feed quality, just this is really good for cows. Um, but if you're looking to fatten young stuff, try to keep it this young vegetative growth. In the last couple of years, we've been trialling um, here at the Merriwall pasture demonstration site, some um, tropical legumes. We really don't have too many tropical pasture legumes in our farming systems here in the Upper Hunter and especially on the Mirabal Plateau. But we realise there is a, a space, a spot for them within our systems and the importance um, that potentially they could add value to, to our temperate um, systems. One of the biggest uh, findings that we've found in how resilient this desmanthus is. Um, this desmanthus was sown right in the middle of the drought in 2019. It, it was slow and it, there was quite sparse this establishment to start with, but since then and since the seasons have turned around, it's, um, it's really, it's set seed, it's come away again. It is a, um, it is a perennial, it's, so it will, um, will reshoot and it, it will set its seed to come again. Um, it's a non, what we also like about it is it's a non-bloating legume and the feed quality, we've just recently taken some feed quality tests of this and it is quite high, being a legume, it is very high in our feed value. So it, it fits the spot of potentially fitting into our temperate grass systems um, and adding, so why our temperate grass systems are um, dormant during the summer, these will be growing, utilising those summer rainfall events that we get and putting nitrogen back into the soil. And while the cattle are grazing, you're not, um, you're not at risk of blowing cattle, just like with some of the others, clovers we get uh, bloat from, uh, the lucens we get bloat from, um, and, and grazing management is key to that. But um, these have definitely are going to start to show their way in the upper hunter um, of being part of another uh, tool that we can use in our pasture system. I wouldn't recommend to put them in with summer tropical grasses. They're too competitive for moisture, so um, it, it's place for them. That isn't the place for them. Um, and just yeah, just really drought hardy. I, I, I can't, it says that they are drought hardy on, on the brochure and that they definitely have proven how drought hardy they are. Another uh, promising tropical legume that's showing its potential for these Merriwell heavy soils is, is the butterfly pea. Although it did struggle last year in the, in the harsh seasonal conditions and it, it was tough out here. There was no ground cover and like very limited rainfall events. So it really wasn't ideal for the establishment of tropicals and all that of anything really last year. But these ones this year have been re-sown and since we've had a much more um, easier summer, um, they're really showing their way to get up and get growing as well and, and be potentially a, uh, another useful tool within our um, farming systems. Again, I would recommend them to go into, could even potentially be a na native grass system. Um, they might suit that area or they could go back into our temperates again. But yeah, beautiful little um, mauve pea on it. Um, yeah, it's quite, again, high feed quality and uh, probably one of the better ones to be adapted for these heavier soils. In 2016, we sowed um, over 12 different types of legumes, winter legumes, and um, it had a great, 2016 was quite a wet winter and, and they really did get up and perform quite well, all these legumes. But since then, the tap was, had been turned off and um, we really had to, they've had a tough time, but it's good to see this year that they're starting to come back quite well. We have um, your typical subs, here and we also have some a lot of a quite off four or five types of medics three or four different types of subs we have some um, woolly pod vetch in here um, barrel medics etc and the, the, the initial thought of this was to see which legumes potentially would fit the tropical grass system I think um, from what we're seeing we've made that decision of which legume would fit the tropical grass system but it also helps people with their decision making on if they are going to improve their native pastures with legumes on this heavier soil. 
which, which legume probably is the best one, how it adapts uh, to the mirror wall environment, how it performs. It's growth periods, when it does grow, when it cuts out, when, the, um, when it starts to get those really hot days in spring, which ones cut out first. Just basically it's growth habits and how they, so people, can, landholders can make their decisions on how that pasture is going to fit into their, their system. And is that really what they want? Um, I guess it's sort of like a catalogue, I suppose, of uh, working out which one's going to best suit your system. So, so these local demonstration sites are pretty good as, as providing us a bit of an indication of um, what insect pressure is about at the moment. At the moment, um, a couple of months ago, we had those big, massive, big uh, moth flights through the night. Um, and now we're starting to see potentially what they were. Um, we're, st we're starting to see some insect activity in the medics of uh, the pasture web webworm um, and also in the other subs we're starting to see a fair bit of um, armyworm but also our local, well, sorry, the, the native Heliothus punctidra that would have flown in from out west on those westerly winds, those changes that we did get start to see to come through. Um, they're starting to have an impact on these clovers and uh, starting to eat some of the vegetation and, and the clovers probably putting a little bit more effort into trying to fight those than into growth at the moment. So. I would be mindful that if you are out in the paddock, please have a look in your pasture, not across your pasture, to be able to see, is there anything there eating it? Um, is it affecting its production? Uh, if so, contact your local agronomist and get them come out and see whether it's at thresholds, those insect levels are at that threshold that you need to come in and, and put in some sort of management um, measures. That, that, just looking here, there, there are some insects that are starting to probably reach some of those thresholds. You'd be thinking, well, do we bring the cattle in or do we look at another control method? So please look, go for a walk, look at your vegetation, seeing what's affecting it, um, and then contact your local agronomist to help make those decisions. One of the main aims of this um, site is, is to provide landholders with um, with information that helps them in the adaptation of the variable climatic conditions. As you're aware, there's been quite variable over the last couple of years and just to have this good information here, to be able to have their system set up so that they can adapt to those variable climatic, um, climatic conditions. So that when it does rain, they can make it water use efficiency and make value of those frequent or infrequent rainfall events. So the next stage of this uh, Meriwa pasture demonstration site is the installation of the soil moisture probe that we have over the back here and also a, weather, a full weather station to go with it. And that probe is measuring water, water usage and water infiltration out in an active pasture system, which is information that we can use and is available to you, to the landholders, live streamed onto our website platform to help you make the decisions and help you understand how pastures use moisture. So you can access this information by visiting the Hunter Local Land Services website. Please do not hesitate to call one of our officers and um, ask to speak to someone from the Agricultural Extension Team or myself, Sarah Giblin.